Hey everyone, my name is Nate Keating. I'm Phil Culleton, the Developer Relations Lead at Kaggle. And I'm Alexis Cook, a Developer Advocate at Kaggle. And today, we'll be showing you how you can discover and use our newly released pre-trained models on Kaggle to solve machine learning problems. Let's get started. Do you have a machine learning problem, but only limited data you could use to solve it? Or maybe you're looking to improve your performance in a Kaggle competition. For these and many other cases, pre-trained models can help. So what are pre-trained models? Pre-trained models are machine learning models that have been trained on a large data set and which have learned general features, or patterns in data, which you can use or fine tune to your own problem in a process called transfer learning. So what are the benefits? Building machine learning models from scratch can take a lot of time, use a lot of data, require specific expertise, and be resource intensive. Starting with the pre-trained model can give you a head start on your own task, saving you time and money. Because of these benefits, the process of fine tuning pre-trained models has emerged in the last few years as one of the dominant paradigms in modern AI systems. At Kaggle, our millions of users leverage pre-trained models every day. Using our leading platform of open datasets and huge repository of code samples, Kagglers use models to solve problems, win competitions, do AI research, and to learn. The Kaggle community is a source of continuous inspiration for us. So we asked ourselves, how could we make using pre-trained models on Kaggle even better? And we're super excited to introduce Kaggle Models, the newest addition to our platform. Kaggle Models is a hub to discover hundreds of ready-to-use ML models directly integrated into the Kaggle platform. Now let's dive in and see how you can use Kaggle Models. Thanks, Nate. Let's take a look at how to use Kaggle Models. Kaggle Models is a platform with over 2,000 canonical pre-trained models from Google Research, tfhub.dev, and other sources. Models are primarily organized by the machine learning task they perform, such as text classification and object detection, among many others. But you can also filter for models by data type, such as image, text, and audio. Or maybe we need a model that has been implemented in TensorFlow, PyTorch, or TF Lite. There's a filter for that too. To access the full set of filters, we only need to click on the All Filters button, which opens a panel on the right side of the page. We can also search by name. We'll look for a bird vocalization classifier model that we'll use later in this session. Clicking on the result brings us to the model detail page. Every model in the hub has a detail page like this one, where we can find metadata about the model. So information like the data it was trained on, the metrics that were used to evaluate performance, and the model framework. For instance, this specific model was implemented in TensorFlow, and it was developed by Google Brain, Google Bioacoustics, Cornell, and the California Academy of Sciences. It identifies bird species by sound, and it can distinguish between over 10,000 different types of birds. On this page, we can also find code examples for how to use the model. And the code to load the model is simple. We use hub.load, and then just fill in the link to where the model is stored on Kaggle. We'll come back to this when we look at a code example. Another thing to note is that you can access all of the Kaggle community's public code that uses the model, and the discussions about the details of the model directly from this page. So here, we see that there are several notebooks or coding projects that the community has published using this model. These examples typically have complete end-to-end -end code that you can use to inspire your own machine learning projects. Now, I'll hand off to Alexis for a demonstration. Now we'll walk through a demo to show how to find an open source model and use it to generate a submission to a Kaggle competition. But first, what is a Kaggle competition? Kaggle competitions are live machine learning problems. They range from traditional supervised learning to problems involving generative and large models to reinforcement learning problems in simulated worlds. To participate in a competition, you need to make a submission. The submissions are ranked on a leaderboard using relevant and sometimes novel evaluation metrics. And winners can be awarded recognition or even prizes, while advancing the state of the art in areas as diverse as whale tracking, sign language translation, and medical imaging. Today we'll be working with data from a Kaggle competition called BirdClef. 
In this competition, the goal is to advance the state of the art for identifying bird species by sound. It focuses on East African bird species, and winning solutions will be used to support ongoing efforts to protect avian biodiversity in Africa. Now, you might have already realized that the pre-trained model that we just explored performs a very similar task. It also classifies bird species by sound. And if we return to the model, we can find several coding examples to help us get started. For the rest of this session, we'll discuss the code from the notebook titled Inferring Birds with Kaggle Models. It walks us through how to use the pre-trained model to quickly make a submission to the competition. In this session, we'll keep the discussion at a high level, so we'll skip past some details and focus on the most important pieces of code. We'll begin with exploring how the notebook loads and preprocesses the data. And to understand this, we'll need to return to the model page. If we scroll down and look for the input format, we see that the model wants five second audio segments sampled at 32 kilohertz. And the notebook preprocesses the competition data in the same way. For instance, consider this clip of a barn swallow. The full clip lasts 20 seconds, so we need to break it into four clips each lasting five seconds that have each been sampled at the required frequency of 32 kilohertz. These clips will be separately fed into the model to get a prediction of the bird species. Here's some code that does just that. After loading the model, we use the load data function to generate the input audio segments. Then we loop over each of the five second segments and generate a prediction. We do this with the infer tf method that is built into the model. These predictions are returned as logits, so to convert them to probabilities, we need to take the softmax. The probabilities variable here contains the model's guess for the probability that the audio clip corresponds to each of the 10,932 bird species that the model was trained on. Using these probabilities, we can get the model's best guess just by searching for the largest entry. And when we do this for the sample clip of a barn swallow, for each of the four segments, we get four different predictions. In each case, the model gets the species correct, and it's very sure of its answer. But we shouldn't expect the model to get it right all of the time. For instance, consider another audio clip of a different species, this time a brimstone canary. The model sometimes predicts the correct species, but it's not as confident as the previous example. And in two cases, the model is predicting the incorrect answer, and thankfully it's unsure. That is, it predicts the wrong species and with low probability. And if we continue to look at more examples, we'll see some correct answers and some incorrect guesses, but overall, the pre-trained model is a good first attempt. And we can quickly generate a submission to the competition using this model. This will give us a nice spot on the competition leaderboard. And after making that submission, it's time to keep working to improve our results. We'll build off the pre-trained model to improve our predictions through a process called transfer learning. The main idea of transfer learning is that the competition data is completely new to the model. It has never seen that audio before, and so there are still patterns that can be discovered and learned from. After doing this, we can expect that our predictions will yield the correct answer more often and we'll also be more confident with the correct answer. In other words, the labels that were already correct should be predicted with higher probability. Another reason why we really need to do transfer learning is, well, remember that the model can distinguish between over 10,000 different species. But the competition has only 264 species. Fortunately, most of the 264 are recognized by the model. But there are a few species that the model knows nothing about that don't appear in that collection of 10,000. So we need to find a way to build an understanding of these new species. To see how we'll do transfer learning, we'll take a second look at the code that the model uses to get predictions. 
You'll notice that in addition to returning the logits that we use to get probabilities, it also returns embeddings. These embeddings represent a distillation of the model's understanding of how audio should be interpreted to predict bird species. And to do transfer learning, you can feed these embeddings as input to a different model. This new model will be very simple and need just a single layer. And because of its simplicity, it will need very little time to train on the order of minutes. We'll also get better predictions that help us move up the competition leaderboard. But that's all for now. Thanks for hanging with us and see you next time. Thanks, Phil and Alexis. This was just a quick walkthrough of one use case for Kaggle models. We hope you learned something useful. We're working on making models easier to find and test, easier to embed directly into your workflows, and on better ways for you to share your own models. We cannot wait to see what you create. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon on Kaggle. Thank you.